Okay, you're taking a live look over at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Very wet out there as the city of Atlanta now has its first ever flash flood emergency. Do want to talk a little bit more about the system itself. We're talking about Tropical Storm Helene and what to expect. So let's bring in Michael Brennan. He is with, of course, the National Hurricane Center, the director there joining us uh, pretty regularly over the past several days here as the storm did get closer and closer to making that landfall. Thank you so much for taking the time, as always, to be here with us because I know it has been a busy few days. Yeah, great to be with you, Josh. Yeah, and uh, the impacts from Helene are still ongoing this morning, and actually some of the worst impacts that we're going to see in Georgia, North, and South Carolina are actually starting to play out this morning. So it's going to be a very dangerous day across these regions, as you've been talking about. Yeah, and kind of explain where the storm sits right now and what we can expect from it, because it looks like it's not really dying out anytime soon. Yeah, the center of the storm here is located just to the west southwest of Clemson, South Carolina, up here in uh, northeast Georgia. Uh, the storm has been moving very quickly to the north at about 30 miles per hour. If we look over here on the satellite imagery, you can see the cloud shield associated with it. The low level circulations down here to the west. Uh, maximum sustained winds now around 60 miles per hour, so they're coming down gradually. But we're still seeing wind gusts 60 to 70 miles per hour in portions of Georgia and South Carolina over the last couple of hours. The, but the big story is turning into the rainfall. And as you mentioned, we have flash flood emergencies in effect uh, across North Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, everywhere you see blinking in red here, including the metro Atlanta area, Asheville, Greenville, South Carolina, just anywhere to the north and west of Charlotte. That's where we're having that life threatening catastrophic flash flooding ongoing. Some of these areas are going to see rainfall totals as high as 20 inches. And so we're seeing water rescues, water getting into homes and buildings and structures. So it's a very dangerous day uh, unfolding here in the southern Appalachians and North Georgia. As far as those water rescues, we have seen a lot of them. We know that crews have been out all throughout the night, uh, pretty much working in places like, let's say, Atlanta. We know Tampa as well. Uh, can you talk yeah. a little bit about what to expect in those areas? Will the water in places like Tampa, for instance, actually be going down? Yeah, the, the, the storm surge along the west coast of Florida is gradually subsiding this morning. Uh, we still do have a storm surge warning in effect from Indian Pass all the way through the Big Bend region down through the Tampa Bay area. And there still is some leftover inundation, especially up in this area that got the peak storm surge associated with Helene. But we are seeing those water levels drop. And so it, uh, it'll, conditions are improving there. But it's a reminder to everyone in those flooded areas. Flooded areas are really not safe to go into afterwards. There can be lots of debris. There can be dangerous materials, chemicals in the water. There are not environments you want to go back into until you're cleared to do so by your local officials. We actually spoke with uh, one of the meteorologists uh, who was out there in Tampa and said that it smelled of raw sewage and essentially said you need to avoid that water really for the reasons that you just mentioned there. And before I let you go, I do want to ask because I know that there is another system that is out uh, pretty far out right now and uh, I know you're keeping an eye on that. Is there any way to tell if it is headed toward the U.S. and could have an impact? It's, it's too early to tell. We are watching this uh, uh, this area here of the Northwestern Caribbean for the with the potential for an area of low pressure to form by the middle of next week. We're uh, assigning this a 30% chance of it becoming a tropical depression within the next seven days. It's too early to tell what impacts there might be, but this is a, another reminder to everyone, especially along the Gulf Coast, Florida, the western part of the Atlantic Basin, is this is the area where we tend to favor um, tropical depressions and storms and hurricanes forming as we get into late September and October. So it's a great reminder. We've got a lot of hurricane season left. We'll be obviously watching this one along with everything else going on in the Atlantic and Helene for uh, here at the Hurricane Center. All right, Michael Brandon there with the National Hurricane Center. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know you have a lot going on, so we really appreciate it. Thanks. All right, we've been checking in with our different teams. That includes Fox 13 Tampa, Fox 35 Orlando, as well as Fox uh, 5 Atlanta here. I do want to pop up the audio so we can listen in to their newscast as they do have a team of reporters that are covering, I've mentioned this a few times, but the first ever uh, flash flood emergency for the city of Atlanta. We're talking ever. Let's pop up the audio and take a look as they do have their reporters out there covering this. Wind, but man, this has become a big flooding issue. 
I mean, the water is incredible. It's still rising. The water level keeps getting higher and higher. I'll step out of the way. This is Bowler Road in Buckhead, where we had that water rescue a little bit earlier this morning. And now that it's light out, you can really see why that rescue was so tricky. The water is moving very fast across Bowler Road. And again, the water level keeps rising. So we've shown you a couple of times this morning that mailbox back there. It's almost submerged now. And then, of course, the stop sign behind it that I talked about earlier, completely underwater. You can't even see the stop sign anymore. And then look at the front yards here. So the water is overflowing from Peachtree Creek over the road. We've got a car there. We have watched that car disappearing through the morning. When I got here about 6 a.m., I'd say the water was just over the tires. Clearly, that is not the case anymore. So it is continuing to be a dangerous situation here in areas that are dealing with this flooding. The rain is letting up, so that is good news. And fingers are crossed that that continues. Meanwhile, Dana Fowle is now joining our team coverage. She's in Rockdale County. Where there's some trees down. Dana, what are you seeing? Oh, absolutely. We are at 138 just south of um, Tucker Mill Road uh, near uh, Heritage High School. Let me get out of the way so you can see what's going on here. They are moving a vehicle. You see that tree? It came down. It was still dark outside. In that vehicle was an off-duty Clayton County police officer coming home after a full shift. As we understand it, that tree was headed down and he went right into it. It was dark as it could be. He couldn't see it. As uh, his superior said, 10 seconds earlier, a little bit going a little bit faster, that tree would have landed on top of him. So they are so happy that he escaped major injury, they believe. There were no visible injuries to him, but they did see, uh, they wanted to send him to the hospital for observation, obviously. Now, this is a main road out here, so they are clearing this as quickly as they can. You see um, big equipment behind it. Uh, you see, and we heard some, uh, some equipment trying to chop up that tree, so we'll see what happens there. Um, listen, Rockdale PD tells us that there are a lot of trees down in the area like this, so if you can, still stay off the roads because we see traffic backed up here. There's just no point in coming out right now. Um, Rockdale office says um, power lines are down, and I got to tell you, as we were coming out here, we were having power lines whip the front of our car, and that was pretty scary, so it, this may clear out in a bit, and when you see folks outside or the kids saying, hey, I want to get outside, make them be really careful about what they see because I do think you're going to run into power lines, even if your electricity is still on, still around. So the good news is in the 40 minutes that we've been here, the weather has cleared up so much. So hopefully we're just moving into cleanup phase, fingers crossed. But we are live in Rockdale County. Dana Fowl, back to you. All right, glad he's expected to be okay. And seriously, just stay home if you can right now because there's trouble all over the metro area. Dana, thank you.